Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Pure Cloud Community's Q&A show. My name is Matt Lawson. I am your online community manager. And today, oh, bad news. The community has a bit of a bug going on. Imagine you're browsing your favorite content. You see a post that you're really interested in. All of a sudden, 403 error. The good news is, it's not just happening to you, it's happening to everyone. The bad news is, well, it's happening to everyone. Luckily, George and I put our heads together and we decided that we still wanna do our best to try to answer the pressing questions that you have. So today's episode is going to be a little unorthodox. Instead of going into the community as we know it, we're gonna be answering questions from the summary emails that go out. Hey, George, welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? Doing much better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice the community is down? Yeah, I noticed you're having some fun there. Yeah, I'm having a good time. George, as you know, the community is experiencing some technical difficulties, but that won't stop hardworking community patriots like you and I from doing what we were brought to this very show to do, and that is answer questions. So let's go ahead and get started. So George... As always, I'm going to start with a question that you selected. I mentioned at the top of the show that this week's episode will be a little different because we are trying to read these questions off of an email versus in the community. But this one, we actually have the full content, which is nice. So you picked this question, which came in last month. Um, Natang asks, one of my customers has set up a flow for voicemail. When there is a call in the queue that has been waiting a while, the caller will have an option to press nine in order to go to voicemail. Just before the voicemail greeting is finished, there is an agent becomes available and the call is routed to the agent instead of continue onto the voicemail. Is that something normal? How can I prevent an agent to get a call that go to voicemail? George, what kind of advice do you have for our friend? And actually later on in the thread after Melissa had responded, uh, New Tapong came up with the right solution, but I wanted to actually step through it and show it because uh, it was just described briefly as, oh, here's what I figured out, but I wanted to go through the real solution and just show it to everybody so it's documented and people can reproduce it if they want to. Perfect. I'll go ahead and let you share. All right. See if I can get this up. So here, am I showing you the right task? Yep, in Q task. Okay, good. Yep. It's always hard for me to see with four monitors which one I'm picking. Okay, so here I just threw together uh, an in queue call flow that shows the functionality that, that was being talked about. It starts off, uh, a call came into queue and then it ended up in the in queue call flow because no agents were currently available to take this interaction. First thing is there's a quick thank you for holding, then it does a little loop with some hold music, set it up for 55 seconds because it takes about one minute for the hold prompt and then the thank you for holding. Set up to play twice. So basically after two minutes, it's gonna get down to this collect input which says, hey, do you want to remain on hold or do you want to transfer to voicemail? Um, now, one thing that's not mentioned right here in this prompt is that our voicemail for ACD queues actually gets dumped back into the queue as a callback. So the agent will receive that voicemail and get a little script and then they'll be able to call back to the person after listening to the voicemail. So in this case, it's press uh, one if you want to go to voicemail, press two if you wish to remain on hold for an agent. So I just do a little analysis there. There's a decision that checks to see, and, and you'll notice it says the menu choice is not equal to two. I'm doing that because if they, <clears throat> if they choose two, then that's the choice for, as we set up above, remaining on hold for an agent. We're setting this up by default to just transfer to voicemail if they don't choose to stay on hold. You could go the other way and say, if the menu choice is not equal to one, 
then the default choice would be um, to stay in queue. But I went the other way. And then we have this transfer to the sales voicemail. So we're gonna do a transfer to another flow. And I have to transfer to an inbound flow. I cannot transfer to another in queue call flow. In this case, the name of that other flow is sales voicemail. If it transfers successfully, then this flow ends, they're out of this in queue call flow and onto the other flow, or if it fails for some reason, then it just actually puts them right back on hold in this queue. So you've got a little safety net there in case the transfer to the other uh, inbound call flow works. The reason we're transferring to another inbound call flow is that we don't want for the voicemail prompt to be playing, which is the problem that was being seen in the thread. And then while the voice prompt is playing and the person thinks they're in voicemail and they're about to leave their message, suddenly they're talking to an agent. Because while the system is playing that voicemail prompt, it's still trying to get an agent for the person because they're still in this in queue call flow. So if an agent comes available, boom, they're transferred right over. They're not actually leaving a voicemail anymore. So we're transferring it out of this functionality right away to make sure that we're gonna cut off the uh, possibility that it's gonna somehow go to an agent while they're leaving the voice or while they're hearing the prompt leave a voicemail. So real quick up here, I'm gonna shoot on over to my inbound call flows. And you'll see I have a sales voicemail flow here. And it's very simple. I just created a starting task. So it jumps right in, there's no prompt. I actually, it says there's an initial greeting, but I set it to 100 milliseconds of silence. I'm not gonna say anything to them before it dumps into voicemail. And I'm gonna dump it straight into the sales voicemail. So it's set up to transfer to the sales queue. You can transfer a voicemail to multiple locations. It could go to a user, a group, or a queue. And in this case, we chose the queue. There's a greeting that plays. And then for the callback settings, here's the information that gets sent to the agent when they receive this callback to be able to call the person after listening to the voicemail. So we're gonna take the remote name from the call. The callback number is gonna be the Annie on the call. And then I assign a script that's gonna be used, my sales callback script. It's gonna show some information to the agent. And that just takes the person's voicemail, records it, and then dumps it right back into queue as an attachment to the callback request that goes to another agent in that sales queue. Pretty simple. And that's basically what we were getting at there uh, with everything that was in that thread. Hope that makes sense. Um, it made just a little bit of sense to me, but I think it'll make a lot more sense to uh, some other people who are watching. Thank you, George. Believe it or not, you get to take a break for the next section because I get asked certain questions all the time. And I like this show because I get a chance to answer them. And one of the questions that came in recently was from, um, was from uh, one of our contributors named Ben. Simple enough, he wanted to know about community password reset and his message was, all right, I give up. Where do I reset my password for the community? When Ben asked me how to, um, how to reset his password, I thought the answer was relatively simple. And I showed him that if you're ever locked out of your account, you can always click the forgot password link here on the sign in page. Easy enough. What Ben was actually trying to do was um, change his password. Because what happens is, after you click this forgot password link, you are sent an email that gives you a really long, character heavy, um, you know, encoded password that you can change. And there's a link for it that I've linked to in Ben's question. Okay, George, I know once you saw that the community was down, you were really excited for a couple of reasons. First of all, you were hoping that we would not have to record today. I know it's true. Second of all, you were hoping that even if we did record, we might get to skip out on your least favorite segment, Stump the Expert. But, probably guessed, here it comes, George. Oh dear. These questions have never received an answer. Therefore, any advice George can offer is really better than nothing. 
The benefit to you as a user is we have a new feature that we're adding to this segment. If George cannot successfully answer a question, you as a customer or partner can now earn valuable GCAP points. Ooh, that's right. If George or any of our future experts fail to answer a question, we are going to move that question to a bounty board where you have the chance to answer it and score some pretty sweet swag in the process. All right, George, here comes your first question. It comes to us from David. He wants to know about inbound ringer sound. David says, good morning. One topic that has, reportedly, that has repeatedly come up is the question as to whether our agents can change the inbound ringer sound. To quote one of them, it sounds like, quote, electronic crickets, end quote. David does not disagree. Having that in your ear all day, even with the volume turned down, can be a piercing experience. George, what advice do you have for David? Can those crickets be silenced? I did not find a way to change it, but I won't swear there's no way to change it. Um, I just can't think of a way to do it. All right, that sounds like a pretty good way to do it. That sounds like a pretty good one to go up on the bounty board. If anybody out there can help David, you are definitely in the running for some wonderful GCAP points. It looks like George, for the time being, has been stumped. If I come up with the right answer later, can I get the swag? I'll give you something. Okay. I'll give you something real nice. Question two. Marshall wants to know about implementing email interactions via email attendant. I don't know if that's a typo or not, but it's A-T-T-E-N-D-A-T, attenda. Marshall says, hello all. Hope you guys have some pointers for a newbie. I am having an issue with undeliverable messages and the built replies duplicating in the monitored mailbox. What could be causing this problem? The whole email attendant thing is, <laughs> is I feel, misconfigured but I can't figure a good way to do it. I assume that's where my summary stops. George, what advice do you have for Marshall? I'm pretty sure I actually answered this one on the community, but my question back was um, whether he was actually on Pure Cloud or on Pure Connect, because the terminology being used there is actually Pure Connect language. So it's either somebody who has been used to using Pure Connect or who is still on Pure Connect and is on the wrong forum. Gotcha. Because we don't have attendant in Pure Cloud and we don't have monitored mailboxes in Pure Cloud. Uh, and the whole thing sounds more like Pure Connect. So Perfect. I couldn't answer it without knowing for sure which platform they were on. All right. When I was looking earlier today, it didn't look like you had a reply, but we'll make sure this news gets out to Marshall and maybe help him move this uh, discussion to the right community. Marshall, sorry we couldn't be of more help. Uh, in the event you are in fact on Pure Cloud, this will in fact go on the bounty board. So if anybody has any suggestions, maybe Marshall can clear up what he's asking and some help will be on the way. All right, George, this last question comes to us from Samuel. He wants to know about warm transfer to a user dash timeout. Sam asks, Dear Pure Cloud, hope you are well. We are investigating the timeout to do a warm transfer to a user, and we are finding the system is defaulting to 30 seconds before transferring to the Pure Cloud voicemail. In the organization settings, there appears to be a timeout setting. The number of seconds to, uh oh, Unfortunately, this question got cut off and I cannot see the rest. George, based on what information uh, I could provide from Samuel, what advice do you have? Yeah, it's a harder one to answer without seeing the whole question, but I'm guessing at the question angling toward the default timeout that is set uh, at the system level, because there is a setting for timing out on alerting of interactions and then going to voicemail. Unfortunately, that setting does not actually have any effect on much of anything right now. Uh, so when you change the system overall default setting, it does not actually change the user settings that are left at the default. And when you create a new user, it doesn't change the default. 
basically you just have to go to each individual user and set the timeout for how long the system waits before transferring to voicemail uh, when it calls alerting on that user. Yeah, there is no central way to do it for everybody. I think that's what that question was angling toward, if I remember correctly. And it's something I had a discussion with development on in the background and we were working on trying to get a solution together, but um, for now it's, it's not a high priority to change that central setting. Gotcha. Well, Samuel, we hope what uh, George had to say was helpful. If you want to clarify your question or add anything, let us know. We'll be happy to revisit this in a future episode. How was Experience 19 for you, George? It was good. Uh, I felt like I was just in session after session as a presenter. Um, sure. Got dragged into multiple things, but it was good getting that FaceTime with people. I don't I don't often get to be face to face with customers. So it was really good to get out and see people, um, have some discussions, live discussions, uh, and work through some stuff. So yeah, I liked it. Um, I know you got to sit in on a few presentations also, including the one I did. So um, yeah. what was your favorite presentation, George? You can be honest with me. Oh, gee. Um, which of mine or which of yours should I pick? <laughs> Probably the one with the ice cream. I like that. That was mine. That was mine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Good. Um, you know what? I thought so too. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It was a good. Yours was the favorite Pure Cloud presentation I went to. Oh wait, it wasn't Pure Cloud. It was. Well, community. not specifically. Yeah, I refer to it as product agnostic. But yes. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I had a great time at Experience 19. Great to see you. Great to meet. Um, some of our regular community uh, contributors like Aaron, uh, Aaron, I actually met two Aaron's um, as well as James. And um, I'd never met one of our colleagues, uh, Chad before. So it was cool to see him uh, mm -hmm. as well as Lucy or Lucia. Um, but yeah, all great people had fun. Um, hope to do it again next year.